Um, John Egan has been installing flow devices to resolve beaver flooding problems with Mike Callahan and Beaver Solutions every summer since 2012. After graduating from Siena College in May 2018, he joined Beaver Solutions full time. He's a licensed problem animal control agent and has installed hundreds of flow devices in southern New England. John will share his wealth of knowledge on assessing and managing a variety of beaver issues with an emphasis on the use of non-lethal flow devices to resolve beaver dam flooding issues. He will review multiple successful flow devices, their indications, limitations, and the success rates of over 1,800 different flow devices installed by Beaver Solutions. And I just made the connection that when I was having, when I came to the Beaver Institute a couple years ago on a farm in Kansas dealing with beavers there, uh, I reached out to Beaver Institute and John was the one who responded with myriads of PDFs and uh, JPEGs and videos that helped me install a key stone culvert. So uh, thank you, Mike, for that email and for, excuse me, John, for that email and bringing me to the Beaver Institute. So uh, uh, take it away and give John a round of applause. All right. Thank you, Adam. So I'm going to be talking about flow devices today. Um, with only a half an hour, you can't really get into how each and every one works and how to install one. It's just too much information. So I'm going to give a basic um, overview of, a, of about each flow device we put in. And afterwards, if you have any questions inside here or outside, I'll be happy to answer them. So Skip is one of the uh, people who's created so many of these flow devices, and he gave a great introduction to what flow devices are. So I think I'll mostly skip this slide and talk about trapping and flow devices. So normally when highway departments in particular, who we work with most because beavers plug culverts so much, they like to automatically go and hire trappers in order to solve their beaver problem at the culvert. The issue is, is as you can see, once you trap beavers, they tend to come back again and again and again. And it's a short term and also a very expensive solution. Not only for the price of constantly hiring the trappers to come back, but all oftentimes when the highway departments have to clear the culverts, they'll damage the culvert time and time and again. And there's been multiple points where the culvert was set at that height for a reason, and then it gets, gets bent up, and now they can't get the water down as much as they would have preferred. So flow devices, we usually guarantee that they will last at least six years, but these are constantly involve, evolving and we're getting them to last 10 plus years now. And with all of the um, different flow devices we put in, we like to kind of see how did it work, what went wrong, and what can we do to make them last even longer. So I'm going to go over multiple types of flow devices and as well as the wildlife passes, passages that we put in to keep the culverts open for wildlife to pass through. I'm, forgive me if I call starter dam diversion fences. I've always called them diversion fences and everyone's been calling them starter dams, so I'll probably screw that up once or twice. So this is a, one of the easiest fixes you can do to prevent beavers from clogging a culvert. The concept is you wanna control where the beavers will dam. So what we like to do is we like to build a small fence. It can even be a rock wall or something as simple as this where it just catches debris, it creates a lot of noise, and then the beavers will wanna dam there instead of inside the culvert. And it's actually very, um, it works very well actually. The the whole process of it, even if the beavers are really intent at getting in the culvert, they clear, the highway department clears it, you clear it, and then they dam up the culvert again, um, they still would like to dam where it's easiest and where their instincts want to um, make them dam. So here is a culvert that was completely blocked. The water was approaching the road. Once you get it cleared up, this was going right into a river, so you didn't need to worry about downstream flooding, which was nice. And here's the water blasting through. So as you can see here, you don't really, we didn't really need to worry about the culvert as a wildlife passage. So what I did, and this was put in just a few weeks ago, was, like I said, I like to have the dam as far away from the culvert as possible. We like it 10 to 15 feet. 
Unfortunately, here, there wasn't the room to do that. So normally, you don't need the diversion dam that big, or starter dam, I should say, that big. We can normally just do it six inches above the water level, and that'll work. Uh, I built this one a little taller to keep them as far away as possible from it. And then also, there's a dam upstream of that. So if they built it too tall and it would approach that, we would eventually be able to add a pipe. And that is a benefit of the starter dam here, is it doesn't have to be set it and then you leave it there. You can set it and then you can always come back later and add a pipe if the water level gets too high. So here's the angle from, from the side, and you can see the road bed is raised up right there. So that's where the issue wasn't that the dam was causing, beavers being there was an issue. The issue was that they were clogging the culvert and it was causing issues for the road. So I emphasized before that we like to keep the dam far away from the culvert itself. So here is two pictures from 2010 when this was first put in in the Berkshires in western Massachusetts. And on the left you can see the T-post sticking up and then the dam starts getting taller and taller. And here is a picture from last month. So as you can see, this is the importance of having them dam as far away from the culvert as possible. While this doesn't look great when you're there in person, it's still got plenty of room for water to flow through the culvert. But that just goes to show over time, this is why it's important to have the starter dam further away from the culvert. But as you can also see, beavers have been there for now 12 years, and it was a cheap, easy installation to do, and yet there have been no issues over the course of 12 years. So next I'm gonna go on to the culvert protective fence, is what we call it. And this is where, say, you can't put in a diversion dam because there's really no room to have water fluctuations. If you can't have the water come up two feet, this is the way to go to protect a culvert. So this fence, um, we like to have it in a trapezoidal shape, um, as Skip, I'm sure, could <laughs> tell everybody. That's really what helps prevent beavers from clogging the culvert. And it works for a few reasons. The first reason is it creates a larger perimeter for the beavers to dam on. And as anyone here who have seen beavers clogging culverts can tell you, it's, it's pretty much a natural dam for them. You have a raised roadbed and all it is is a small little breach in the dam that they have to fix. That's how they look at it. So by creating a larger perimeter, we like to go at least 12 feet out, that automatically helps deter them to dam it. The other reason why this works is because they like to work almost like if you're damming a river, you wanna start where the current is shallowest and work your way to the middle. By having them dam away from the culvert, that goes against their instincts, and you can oftentimes see them, they might dam a first foot or two and then give up because it goes against their instincts to keep going out. And for the same reasons that I was discussing before, the trapezoidal shape decreases, um, it goes against their instincts to dam it. So here's another example. This was a fence that was first put in. The water was over the road. You can see where it's all muddy around just how high the water got from the blocked culvert who put this fence in and they haven't dammed it since. And this is a few years old now. The one important aspect of this installation of, of an installation of this fence is it does need to be maintained, especially in northern climates where you get a lot of leaves falling here. When the currents keep going through and through, it carries leaves and debris uh, with it. So that leaves and those leaves and debris will get caught on this fencing. So that's, you're gonna have to clean it, but the good thing is, is it normally only needs to be cleaned two to three times a year. With this, we usually clean it three times a year and over the course of a year, it's really under an hour of work. The fencing we use there um, has six by six inch gaps in it, and that works best in terms of preventing uh, too much debris from getting clogged in it, but also blocking beavers from going in and out. So if you see, actually, if you see any fences that are made with this with chicken wire, they'll oftentimes not work or something more flimsy as well. They'll also, also not work as well because it'll just catch everything coming through and it'll 
um, and it'll rust out over time. Now you can't always put in a perfect trapezoidal shape because of the terrain around, but here you can see you can kind of customize it to the terrain that you have and the way the channel is coming through. And as long as you use the same concept, it'll help prevent beavers from getting into the culvert and damming it. So this actually has a very high success rate. Its success rate is 95% over the course of 10 years. That 5% where it goes wrong, oftentimes um, it has to do with the installation where you might not have built the fence out far enough or um, the beavers are just so inclined to dam it that uh, that they'll, they'll may, they might start and if it's not maintained, then they'll just keep going around. Another issue with these that we found, obviously a small issue compared to the sample size, is if it's a very low flow area and the, it's very muddy around where it gets a, it makes it a lot easier for them to push mud up against it, that's, that becomes an issue. So where those low flow, very muddy areas um, in front of the culvert where those are, we like to put in smaller pipes and try to avoid putting in this device as much as possible. But as you can see, despite those issues, it's still a highly successful device to install. So next we're going to what we call the flexible pond leveler. So this is a pretty simple concept, but anyone who was at the flow device workshop yesterday has learned there's a lot of intricacies that go to this where you need to get everything correct. So for instance here, if you just stuck the pipe through the dam the, and you didn't have any protection around the inlet end of the pipe, beavers are gonna eventually swim around, feel the water going into the pipe and dam it up. So the point of that cage protecting it is to keep the beavers far enough away where they won't hear or feel the water going into the pipe. So people might debate about how big the cages you need are. We use five foot cages for 10 and 12 inch pipes and six foot cages for 15 inch pipes. I've heard people use other sizes and they uh, can work at different sizes, but as long as you prevent the beavers from hearing or feeling the water going into the pipe, that'll make it more successful. The blocks that you see attached to the pipe are to sink it. You want the pipes as low as possible, and the uh, outlet end of the, the outflow end of the pipe going through the dam, that's what, con that's what controls the water level. So here, if they decided, you know what, we want another foot of water, you can always raise the pipe or lower the pipe. The limitations of this device is how much water do you have at the inlet end of the pipe. We like to have at least three feet of water depth, depending on the situation, to prevent a whirlpool from forming. Because if a whirlpool forms going into the pipe, then the beavers will sense it and they'll just dam the entire cage. So here are some visuals for it getting installed. So I'm just gonna go back here. So the benefit of installing these as well is you don't need to take out an entire dam. A lot of people will ask, do you need an excavator to rip out the dam? Really the only part of the dam you need to mess with is the part of the dam you're sinking the pipe in. So if it's a 12 foot, 12 inch pipe, you really don't need to build a trench through the dam more than a foot wide. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the fence and pipe device. And this is essentially the same thing as a flexible pond leveler. The only difference is, is we're putting a protective fence around the culvert. And that protective fence is actually designed so that way the beavers will dam that. They'll hear the water flowing through the pipe, they'll dam on it, but again, the pipe will control the water level going um, from the pond into the culvert. Now, for those of you who have heard this presentation before and have heard um, all these ways of building um, these devices, I, will, I would like to share some updates about what we've been doing differently in the past two years. So the first thing starts with, we've been using goat panels that we get from Tractor Supply for anyone who has that store by them. And having the smaller openings actually comes in very handy because 
while it's rare that beavers will squeeze in through the six inch by six inch openings, it does happen every now and then and it creates a mess to deal with. They'll squeeze in through the cage and throw mud and whatever they can squeeze in with them into the pipe. So by using the smaller openings, it prevents that from happening. Another benefit of it is when these devices start to deteriorate, the first thing that usually goes is the weldings, where now instead of a six inch opening, it might loosen up and become an eight inch opening, and that's when it be becomes easier for beavers to squeeze in there. Another issue we had during COVID and all the supply chain issues is we like to use single wall pipe. The single wall pipe is a flexible pipe where you could see in the picture before it can lay at the bottom of the pond and flex its way up to the dam. We were having difficulty getting that in New England, so we were getting stuck in situations where we could only use dual wall pipe, which is not flexible at all. The other difficult thing with dual wall pipe is it's also tough to sink and keep, keep at the bottom of the pond over time. So what we had to do was we ended up cutting it in 10 foot sections, coupling up those 10 foot sections, and by creating the breaks in the pipe, it allowed more water to go into the pipe and create a little more flex for where the couplers were. So it's not enough water where the beavers will detect the water going into the pipe, but it really helps sink it compared to a 20 foot section, which is much more difficult to sink. And then this is the third update is uh, kind of what I was kind of getting at before where it was more difficult to get in uh, culvert or keystone fences in low flow, especially highly muddy areas. So what we were able to do was we started using more eight inch pipes to get water flowing through. And instead of needing a full three feet of water at the inlet of the pipe, we've been able to get away with two and a half feet of water because it's a lower flow going through an eight inch pipe. And then finally, and this is a smaller one, but it comes in handy when you're maintaining the devices. Beavers will stick, throw sticks through the fence and it can create a little bit of a mess inside the culvert protective fence for fence and pipes. So what we've been doing, which has come in really handy, both for fence and pipe devices, but also starter dams, is we've been using a smaller two by four inch mesh and that'll catch a lot more both sticks that they're trying to throw th through the fence, but also debris. And that helps with starter dams as well because the more debris you catch up against the fence, the more of an idea it gives the beavers that this is where we need a dam. It creates more noise and they're drawn to that noise and they're more likely to dam that. So, uh, so here is the flat top um, goat panel cage that we were building. And it's tough to see here, but we have, um, this is where we have the 10 foot sections of pipe, which gives it a little more bend, but also helps sink it as well. This fence as well, um, not all culverts, we like to put floors um, on our fences because beavers are very good diggers, so they'll try to dig underneath. In some situations, it's very difficult to try to good, get a good floor in. So this situation, for instance, we didn't even bother putting in a floor, but what we did do is we put up that mesh to try to per catch more debris going through as well as give the beavers a better base for them to dam. So another thing we've learned over time is this device, for instance, you can see the pipe is raised. There's no water behind the outlet end of the pipe. When you have situations like this, it creates a lot more of a water flow situation. And when the beavers hear more water crashing down, they're more inclined to build much bigger dams than when the pipe is, say, at the same level as the water behind it. So when they build much bigger dams, the risk becomes higher that they'll just ramp up and over the fence, which was what happened here. So they, this, um, was a lake association that didn't hire us to maintain the device and they clearly didn't maintain it either. And what happened was they heard more and more water flowing through. They started building the dam higher and higher and higher and they buried the whole fence. Luckily, the pipe was still functional. We just needed to clean it up and raise the height of the fence. So that's something where, where there's gonna be a situation where there's a lot more noise 
you want to build a much taller fence than you normally would. Normally only much taller, I should say, more, about a foot taller. So we like it 18, to two, 18 inches to two feet higher than where the pipe outlet is. For this situation, you might want to have it more two and a half, three feet higher than the pipe outlet. This is another example of that with the spillway. You can put this device in with the spillway. The picture on the left is when the device was first installed. As you can see, that's going to create a lot of noise. And the picture on the right is the much wider dam than beers would normally build around these devices. The more water they hear flushing through, the bigger the dam they're going to build. So, as I said before, with the fence and pipe and the flexible pond levelers, a big issue with that is you can't put them in everywhere because you need three feet of water depth. So I'm just going to go through this quickly here. Um, so one thing you can do to help get it a little lower if you need is you can create multiple intakes for the pipe. So instead of just getting one um, cage where water flows into that one cage, you can then extend a second pipe to another cage and that spreads the flow of water going in and it lowers the um, chance of a whirlpool. So, so here are some examples of that. I'm running short on time so I want to try to get to the wildlife passages. Okay, so when you block these culverts, wildlife still wants to use them. So you still need to get an area or room for beavers and animals to go through the culverts and get out. Because otherwise, if they don't see an area to get out, instead of turning around and going back, they'll oftentimes try to force their way through the fence and then get caught in the fence. So it's always very important to get in a wildlife passage. So the first passage here and the most successful because you can always see the um, devices working or the side passage working very well. Oops. Having issue with the video. But um, so the, f yeah, so the side passage is the easiest passage to install where you can see it's heavily used both through videos and by seeing the trail. You can always, whenever you put this in, you always see a trail that animals use to go around the side of it. So there you can see on the left side, the pipe is going through the fence. And even though beavers will use the passageway, they'll oftentimes not dam inside the culvert because they don't like to go onto land with damming material and then go back into the culvert. It's too awkward for them to grab enough material in order to do that. So another thing, so we can use this for anything, diversion dams, uh, keystone fences, fences and pipes. The only thing you want to make sure when you do this with the fence and pipe and the water level might rise, you want to make sure the fence goes up far enough and away and to the side so that way uh, it's not too easy for them to go around. So we don't do this as often because we don't have as many installations where you have a situation where there's three culverts. So by fencing off two culverts and leaving one open culvert, you prevent anything from using those two culverts, but there's still one open side for beavers to use, or wildlife such as turtles, which we get a lot of in New England. So on the far right, oftentimes, for an extra culvert, or yeah, if we have an extra culvert, we'll put in a little diversion dam in front just to make sure that they won't start throwing stuff in the culvert and then it gets caught in there. So by leaving this, yes, the beavers might throw some damming material on it, but you still have the fence to the side that'll keep the water level even. So this, this works well where you don't have to worry about one culvert getting plugged and then the water level getting so high because they'll usually give up once this isn't controlling the water level. So this one-way door device that we're going to now is uh, most effective for turtles in particular where they don't want to leave the water. So the side passage you'll get a lot of beavers and other animals that they're more willing to leave the water. Turtles, they don't like to leave the water as much. This works by, we normally just cut a 6 inch by 18 inch hole in the fence and we zip tie a small piece of fence in front of it so that way it can pull open if they push up against it from inside the fence but if any beaver tries to use it to dam they can't get in because it's 
low enough where, it, where it'll hit the fence. This is an example of a turtle. So I was actually installing a starter dam in front of a culvert and I started hearing splashing behind me. I turned around and I see this massive snapping turtle swimming up at me. So I jumped out of there and took out my camera and I could see it looking for an opening in the fence. Even though there was an opening on the side, it was just trying to find a way to get out from the fence. So that's where the one-way door comes in handy because if you leave an opening, it'll, the hope is, is they'll eventually find that opening in the fence and push out that way. So this is a new wildlife passage that we just tried for the first time two weeks ago, actually. So the idea is kind of the same as the side passage where we wanna make it too awkward for beavers to uh, dam the culvert but still leave an opening for animals to go in the fence and out of the fence instead of just out of the fence like the one-way door because that's obviously a limitation. So what we do here is like the turtle that you saw in the picture swimming upstream this way, once it doesn't find an opening this way, we cut a hole in this fence here where it can then go this way, turn back to go downstream and leave to go out there. So right now it's just a concept. We installed two of these um, in the past two weeks and we're gonna try to monitor it to see if we can get any videos or any evidence that animals are using it. This is pretty easy to install. And here you can see right here is where they would swim up, turn and go around. And we think it'll be low risk because any beaver trying to carry sticks into the culvert would have a difficult time swimming and making these turns without the stick getting caught in the fence. Like I said, we maintain these fences about three times a year. So any uh, damming or debris that gets in there, we're hoping we can catch and clean out. So if we have a next beaver con, I'm hoping to give you an update on how this wildlife passage works. Thanks. Thank you, John.